Hello and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to revisit something that we looked at in the past and that is how to create a hole in a curved surface. If you remember we looked at this, uh, I don't know, sometime last year I believe actually in 2.49 and I want to revisit it in 2.5 now uh, using some slightly different techniques that will actually make this pretty quick and easy and we're actually going to do it from scratch so we're going to create our curved surface and what I want, the reason that I want to do this is because I want to point out a couple of things for doing this. When you want to create a hole in a curved surface of any kind, one of the most important things to keep in mind is the topology. Because the topology is what's going to define how clean your mesh actually is. In order to create a hole, a nice clean hole in a curved surface, we have to be sure that our topology is also clean or else we're going to see a lot of distortion. And so in this case, for my example, I'm going to go ahead and just punch a hole through a sphere. But the problem is, if I go ahead and just use a UV sphere or an icosphere, the defaults in Blender, then I'm not going to have very clean or even topology. And so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my default cube here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a subdivision surface modifier, set the subdivisions up to three, and then click apply. Now, some of you that are more familiar with this may have immediately noticed that one, this is not a perfect sphere, whereas I want a perfect sphere just for demonstration purposes. And so what I'm immediately going to do is hit tab to go into edit mode, select everything, and then hit alt, shift, and s, which now you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner down here, I have two sphere. And so then I'm just going to hit one on my number pad to go to 100% sphere and hit enter. And now I have a perfect spherical mesh with a really nice, clean, quad only topology. So for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and just punch a hole right here. There's some different ways that we could do this. We could go ahead and just, you know, select, say, this area right here, hit E to extrude, scale it in, uh, then round it out maybe with the two sphere command as well. But the problem is, is that we're not going to keep our nice, perfectly spherical profile, which this is what is really key here and what we want to keep. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead hit tab to leave edit mode, hit shift A to add in a new mesh. We're going to go ahead and choose a circle. On this circle, I'm going to go ahead and hit F6, and I'm going to align it to view. I'm going to set the vertices to 16, and let's set the radius to 0.5. Should be about right. Then if we look at this, we can see it's right in the middle. So let's go ahead and hit 3 to go to side view. I'm going to take it out along the y-axis right here just so it's above this surface. I'm going to switch one back into front view. And now what I need to keep in mind is how is my circle going to attach to the mesh? Because once, once everything's all said and done, this circle will maintain its circular profile from this view, but it will have the profile of the sphere from this view, and so it also needs to attach to the mesh perfectly. So in this case, I need to scale this down such that I can see that, say, this edge and this edge will connect, so like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and so on. So, you know, I need to be sure that my mesh is going to be small enough to fit within this area. And that's, this is what I'm referring to of for keeping your topology in mind. Now, the way that we're going to go ahead and deform this to the surface is we're going to use a shrink wrap modifier. We just choose shrink wrap. And if we set the target to the cube, we can immediately see it shrink down. But you'll notice that we've now lost our circular shape because it just grabbed the ne nearest surface point, which distorted this. So what we want to do is change the mode from near surface point to project. And then right now it hasn't done anything. So what we need to do, let's one switch to side view. And we want to set the axis to, the, to Y and then choose the negative and positive direction. Now you'll still notice that it hasn't done anything. And this is because as far as Blender is concerned, it thinks the Y axis is actually going a different direction because we set a line to view when we added the mesh. And so its rotation is no longer default, or it's not the same as this one here. So we need to hit select it, hit control A, and apply the rotation, and you'll immediately see that it's now shrunk to the surface. But what you also see is now we have a perfectly defined mesh still. And so what we can do now is simply click apply. Let's go ahead and select our shift right click to select our sphere. We'll hit control J to join the two, hit tab to go into edit mode, and then let's just select this area right in here and this area through here 
and this area through here. And we'll hit X and delete vertices. And then we're just going to go ahead and start merging things. So let's hit Control Tab to go into, oh, actually, step back. Um, I deleted both sides and I only wanted to delete the one side. So let's hit go into side view. Then we'll hit B and middle click and drag to deselect those. Now I can hit X, delete vertices. I'm going to go ahead and go to side view again. I'm going to select the back half. Just hit H to hide it so that I'm not worrying about that. Now I can hit Control Tab, go into edge mode. And I can select this edge, this edge, hit F, hit F. I'm going to turn off my, my viewport manipulators. Then I'll select these ones and then these ones. And so again, I'm just going all the way through hitting F on each one of these to fill in the faces. And what I'm going to be left with is a still perfectly circular mesh, but with a nice hole in it. So I can do this, finish these off. Finally, that one. Then I will unhide everything and look at it in the 3D view. Everything looks good. But then what I can really see is if I add in a subdivision surface modifier, maybe set the, or go ahead and set shading to smooth, tab to go into edit mode, select this by alt right clicking, hit E to extrude, take it in just a little bit, and then take it in further, select everything, W and shade smooth. I still have a perfectly spherical mesh. I'm not seeing any distortion in the mesh itself, but I've got a nice hole punched through it. And so you can do the same thing. You know, you could add in a circle right through here. You could do it right in here. You know, it doesn't have to be directly in the center. You could put it anywhere. The center is obviously the easiest due to our topology, but you could put it anywhere else you wanted as long as you line it up with the topology. So looking at, let's just do one more example real quick. That's a little more difficult. And I want to go ahead and put in a hole, say right on this corner. And right with the way I'm going to do this first, let's just disable our um, subsurf modifier for the time being. And I'm going to go ahead and hit shift A, add in another circle. And again, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the 16, the 0.5. And we don't worry about aligning to view. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate my, my circle around. Although actually, if I do it in edit mode, then I won't have to apply the rotation. And then I want to apply it to this corner. But this is a little more difficult because using the project uh, option in the shrink wrap modifier, we're not able to project project at a diagonal. And if we use the nearest surface point, we're not going to guarantee our uh, our accuracy. Or we're not going to guarantee that our form is still correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily move and rotate my base object to fit such that this can just project directly along an axis. So in this case, let's rotate this. 45 degrees like this, and then from the top view, we'll rotate it around the z-axis 45 degrees as well, such that this corner is right on that axis. And let's also go ahead and just pull this back, and then we're going to select this. Let's go ahead and select this object. I'm going to go over to the edit object panels and just enable the wire display as well, so I can very easily see how this is going to line up. Let's go ahead and scale this down a little bit like that, and then we can also go ahead and rotate this a bit to see where this is going to best line up. But let's be sure to do it all at local rotations. I'm going to hit R and then Y and rotate around something like, let's see, actually, probably right in there will work. We can adjust it if we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a shrink wrap modifier. So shrink wrap and then target is the cube. And I'm going to project it only along the y-axis. I'm going to go negative direction as well. So it just pops right in. I can go ahead and click apply. Although actually before I do that, I can now kind of look at where it's at on the mesh. And I can say maybe I want to rotate this around the y-axis a little bit so that these line up. Maybe this lines up. And I might go ahead and scale it down a little bit as well. And that ought to be okay. You know, you need to be aware that you're going to see some distortion when you're not perfectly aligned with the mesh. But let's go ahead and click apply. And we'll go ahead and join the two models. And then what we can do is let's just select some of these faces. So we'll select these. And you notice that I'm not deleting anything yet. And the reason for this is that I don't know exactly how this is going to connect. And so I don't really know what I need to delete. But I can just start kind of filling these in see what works, what doesn't, and I can just fill these in all like this. Say this one here, 
I'll fill that uh, right there. I might have a slight issue. Take that, fill it there, there, and there. Again, we're going to have an issue right here. And so this is where we might need to add in a, another edge loop somewhere. Then that one lined up perfectly. Uh, so let's see. Actually, we should be able to, if we go through, we can actually delete all of these edges. And the reason being is that we've got it lined up over here. And so we can then just follow that same line and we should be okay. So if we fill that, then fill... Let's see, we'll fill that one. Nope, we're going to fill it right there. So, you know, here we can see we're going to have a few issues probably. But that is okay. This is where the topology becomes slightly more difficult. But we can now see, let's go ahead and delete say these vertices in here we'll just delete a few at a time deleting all these and then we could add in say another loop through there or another loop through there or we could go ahead at this point say just rip this over just a little bit fill that and then rip this as well and, you know, maintaining our circular form as best we can, move that over. And then if we look at our subsurf modifier, we can go ahead and take this. We'll extrude it in just slightly. And then again, and we are good to go. Let's go ahead and turn off the, the wire. And there we go. So you can see, you know, you might need to, or you might want to go ahead and slide some of these over just a little bit where we added in the couple extra vertices that we needed. But that's it. So that's how to punch a hole in a surface directly head on where we've got a nice clean mesh or at an angle where we have an awkward mesh. But you'll notice due to the nature of the shrink wrap modifier using the project, we're able to add that in basically anywhere we want. And by rotating the object and moving it, we can still use our project option. So now with the object, if we just hit Alt-R and Alt-G, that will reposition it exactly where it used to be with our nice new holy mesh.